doing some orders and uh, that's some of the Bibles I have for sale. I sold the Bible today and it's kind of important because I've seen videos on YouTube and social media in general that say Bibles that are less than 100 years old are just worthless. And this primarily comes from like antique dealers, people who deal in very expensive Bibles and old books. But if you're not that, Maybe you have some older Bibles, maybe you've inherited them, maybe you just like Bibles because of what they mean to you, uh, and you want to sell those and help others experience that as well. That doesn't mean that those Bibles that you have in your possession are worthless. In fact, I sell tons of Bibles. Over the past eh, three weeks, four weeks, I've sold about eight Bibles. I think I have like 24 listed, so it's a decent sell-through rate. And so what I want to do is go over some of the Bibles I've sold, talk about what makes them valuable, uh, and then just go over the details that can hopefully help you make some money if you need to sell any books you have, you know, for that matter. But in this case, Bibles. Let's go. I wanted to go through the Bibles I've sold over the past few weeks from cheapest to most expensive, uh, and we'll talk about why I think they sold for that price. So here's the first one, very low sale, free shipping, only $7.46. I only made like two or three bucks off of this, and it's the Holy Bible with apocryphal slash deuterocanical books. Deutero canonical books i'm kind of going off of um just th that additional stuff if you can just see like the basic bibles that are made after the year 2000 that are just basic study bibles or youth bibles or the kind of things you see a lot of or the kind of bibles that are in the backs of pews at churches those generally are not worth selling there i'm sure are some exceptions this one caught my eye because it is the the apocryphal slash deutero canonical books included Whenever there's those additional things, uh, I, I look for it. I did not look this up, obviously, when I bought it. A lot of the times with these with the Bibles, it's hard to find an exact uh, similar sold because there were so many different editions made, or, or rather so many different printings of the same edition or similar editions. So it's hard to find an exact copy. Uh, and my, my basic thing for Bibles, my strategy, is I'll price them pretty high, or what I think is pretty high, I'll wait a week or two or maybe a little bit longer, see how many views the listing has, see how many watches it has. And if it really isn't getting a lot of traction, because there are so many Bibles sold and the, and the keyword Holy Bible or The Bible gets so much traffic, if you're not getting a lot of views and watchers, probably your book is priced too high. So unfortunately, it's only worth $7.46. Uh, this would be not worth my time unless I had like a hundred of them. So I'm not going to pick up this Bible probably ever again. Uh, it does look nice, but um, again, just because it looks nice does not mean it's worth good money. Here is the next one. It is the NRSV Harper Study Bible. Same as the other one. That's uh, the new revised standard version. NRSV Study Bible again, $9.99 plus uh, only a dollar shipping. That was an accident on my part. I should have had it probably for either free shipping. What, what, what it was is I was listing sports cards, and those were all 99 cent shipping, and I just forgot to change it. But what, I, what I'm doing now for these lower value books is uh, charging $4.99 shipping, unless it's really big, and then I'll charge like 6 or $8.99 shipping. Always on the even numbers. I don't know why, just a habit. Uh, tons of pictures here. The publisher is Zondervan. You're going to see that a lot. Again, a Bible I just picked up for 50 cents. Nothing too fancy here. Uh, study Bibles, you want to make sure that if there is something to be written in them, like a lot of times these study Bibles are going to have a place for notes or, uh, or questions they're going to ask you. Make sure that they are not filled in because uh, <laughs> I would hate to sell a Bible that I say has not been written in. And I open it up and it's written in and I have to either cancel the sale or go through with an eraser. And, uh, well, that would just be a nightmare. Getting into the more valuable books, NLT Slimline Reference Bible Burgundy Bonded Leather. Bonded leather is a kind of leather. It's not real leather. Uh, they say bonded leather just as a way to avoid saying faux leather. Uh, it's difficult to tell on some of the older Bibles if they're real or fake leather because the leather is such a low quality and so thin that without like destroying the Bible, you can't tell. So oftentimes in the older Bibles from like the 70s or 80s, everyone says it's leather, even though there's no way of knowing without ruining the Bible. Um, when you get red leather, or red letter edition rather, that ups the value a little bit. Anything beyond the norm. So large print, large, large letter print, 
slim line reference stuff like that is going to boost it up from that nine to ten dollar range to 20 and higher um what i again what i this is free economy shipping what i've been doing lately is charging shipping what i've found is that with the bibles i sell because they're all kind of niche bibles especially the more valuable ones that we're gonna get into in a second i do charge shipping uh, because the buyer will pay it quite frankly and that's what it comes down to is i can make a little bit more money on top and so i'm going to do that and if there is writing in the Bible, like right here, I said some annotation, very small amount, predominantly in the beginning. And that's what this was here. But you don't want to hide uh, how much there is. You know, show an example of it. Show a few more. Say, hey, like there's there's writing in here. Most buyers will not care. Uh, and that's only going to take, I would say, in a case like this, you know, five bucks off the, um, the total price you can get for it. Next up is a holy NIV zondervan red letter hardcover brown 1984 it looks black in the picture but it is definitely brown uh, this one again a little bit more writing in there red letter from the 80s this is the kind of thing that if someone maybe they they have they were confirmed in the early 80s maybe they have memories of the 80s maybe they have a a child that was born in 84 maybe they were born in 84 who knows and they want to give them a gift that has to do with that year uh, oftentimes these Bibles will have little signatures in the beginning of them. Again, it isn't a big deal. Don't let that dissuade you from selling any book, not just a Bible, uh, because most oftentimes what they care about is, is there like tears in the book? Uh, and how does the cover and spine look? In this one, I actually forgot to take a picture of the spine. I'd recommend always taking a picture of the spine of the book. I said it was like new. That was probably wrong. Probably it was only in good or very good condition. There's a little bit of writing there. But um, I got feedback from the buyer, and again, they didn't care. It's uh, it's really easy to make a lot of mistakes. It's I mean, obviously right here, it's not like new. But as long as you have good pictures, it's, um, it's going to be okay. The next one sold for a bit more, and I did add shipping on this. Originally, it was priced at $29.95 plus shipping. There's a small hole in one of the pages right there, if you can tell that. Um, someone tore it or, or it tore or a pen went through there. I don't really know how that occurred, but just tell the buyers what you're getting. Uh, this Bible is from the, the mid nineties, uh, the new American standard Bible. So it's not the NRSV version or the NIV or the NLT. It's the NASB. Is that what it says on the side of it? Uh, let's see. Updated edition, new American standard Bible. And then on the back, that down there in gold, that's the, actually the ISBN. And so in some cases, that is going to match uh, something on the interior of the book. And that'll tell you if it's leather or bonded leather. I would guess by the look of this, this is bonded leather, I think. Um, I don't see an ISBN breakdown on the, uh, is this the colophon? I think it's called the colophon. But uh, if you were to do that, or if you were to sell Bibles on Amazon, because you can sell Bibles on Amazon. I don't do it because I thought I can get more money for Bibles on eBay. Uh, but if you get a bunch of them and you want to sell them FBA, for example, a lot of these uh, older Bibles or newer Bibles, too, for that matter, are going to have the ISBN right down there. This one's 0529110628. This next book is not a Bible. It's a uh, concordance of the Bible, indexed Abingdon, 1977, free shipping. So it sold for $22.46. This is a very big, heavy book. I'm not sure what GDO stands for. I think GDO is either the previous library it was in or some three-letter indicator that the, uh, the book is like a remainder of some sort. Again, just pictures of the interior. Yeah, GDO, Gregory D. Osberg. That's the guy who owned it. So I assume GDO stands for out of his personal collection. I paid, again, 50 cents for this. Uh, with a book like this, it is it probably does weigh like 10 pounds, 7 to 10 pounds. So it will, it will cost like, I mean, luckily it's all media mail. But it will be a little bit to ship. Um, whenever I find these big books, absolutely do not FBA them because Amazon does not utilize media mail for their books. It's going to cost like 15 bucks to FBA this and you are not going to make any money at all. But on eBay, these big heavy reference books, they do pretty well. Here was a, an interesting Bible. 
So this is a, again, there's the ISBN, like I was telling you about Holy Bible, Tyndale, NLT, red leather, large print reference, premium leather, definitely leather, not bonded leather, none of that garbage. Uh, it did have some marks on it, had some wear. I think I could have priced, if this was like a mint condition Bible, it would have gone for like 60 or 70 bucks. Um, no, no writing. It could still be, I think, a gift. Sometimes people say gift quality. I, I avoid over promising when I can. Sometimes I make mistakes and I say it's like new when it's not like new. Uh, this time I said acceptable and probably it's better than acceptable on the back. The spine says Tyndale, Holy Bible, NLT, red leather. And obviously it is red letter and it is leather. Uh, the red letter the large print, all of that stuff is really, really good. Has all the right keywords. Slimline. Um, sold, I think, in, let's see, I, I listed it January 27th, and it sold February 13th. So it took about two weeks for this to sell. And again, I paid only 50 cents for it. And the most expensive Bible is the ones that I think you should be looking out for. And that's Bibles from, you know, 50 years ago or earlier. Uh, this one's faux leather. If it was leather, I would have charged like a hundred bucks for it probably. Faux leather, but the Jerusalem Bible. And I pulled up what that is. Uh, whenever I see anything like the something Bible, you know, the soldier's Bible, the farmer's Bible, whatever, and it's an actual Bible, that uh, niche community, and this is actually a Catholic Bible. So what the Jerusalem Bible is, and I'm not saying Catholics are a niche community, but I'm saying that it's not a standard Bible. And so if someone wants it, they're going to pay more. This one also had four ribbons in there. Those are, I call those ribbons. I'm not sure if there's a uh, you know bookmark, maybe it's a better word for them. Those also do tend to up the value. But the Jerusalem Bible, if you see this, what it is, it's a, an English translation of the Bible published in 66 by Darton, Longman, and Todd. As a Catholic Bible, it includes 73 books, the 39 shared with the Hebrew Bible, along with seven deuterocanonical books, as in the Old Testament, and the 27 books shared uh, by all Christians as the New Testament. So it's a uh, not an exhaustive Bible, but a bigger one, bigger version. It was listed on January 30th, and I'm pretty sure it only sold in like two or three days. So stuff like this, that's what I think if you want to sell Bibles and you're not looking for like the old antique ones that these antique dealers and book dealers say are the only ones worth selling, look for stuff like this. I got it at a thrift store. You're going to find these at estate sales, definitely at church sales, a lot of them at church sales. And you're not going to pay, in most cases, more than like a dollar or 50 cents, maybe three bucks at a Goodwill. Uh, but for the most part, these books are going to be priced very reasonably. Thank you for watching. Hope this video helped you. If it did, please give it a big thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you are new and comment below with what you think the coolest Bible here was or any Bibles you've seen that you think are especially nice looking or just cool in general. See you guys later.